In 1991, a 5,000-year-old frozen body was discovered high in the Italian Alps. This ancient man later became known as Utsi the Iceman. Utsi's discovery gives us an insight into what life was like in Europe in the late Neolithic period. Of the items found with Utsi, probably the most impressive is his copper axe. In this video, we will show you how to make an Utsi the Iceman style copper axe blade. The pure copper used to make this ancient axe blade was likely obtained from a green copper mineral known as malachite. It would take several hundred pounds of crushed malachite ore to make one copper blade, making the axe one of the most valuable items you could own in ancient times. The process of getting pure copper from malachite ore is fairly simple using primitive methods. I'll show you how to do this in another video. Compared to modern axes, this ancient copper axe is relatively small, being only 9.3 centimeters long with a narrow trapezoidal outline. The cutting edge is very slightly curved with small points at the tips. These points were formed during the hammering process. Another distinctive feature is the flared out flanges that run parallel along both sides of the axe blade. These flanges were formed by careful hammering and assist in fitting the copper axe blade to the wooden handle. The first step in making our axe is to carve a wooden blank the same size and shape as the original copper blade. This will allow us to press this blank into a mold and cast as many copper blades as we want. Once you have your blank, you're going to need something to make your mold out of. For this project, I use a product called Delph Sand, which is a fine grained sand like material that allows you to pour liquid metal into it without burning. You will also need to get a form to hold your Delph Sand. I made this form out of 6 inch metal pipe that I cut in half and cut off the top to make two matching rings. I made braces out of some flat scrap metal and drilled holes to put bolts to tighten the forms together. Start by pressing the delf sand into the mold so that it's packed tightly with no air pockets. Next press your wooden blank halfway into one side of the mold so that the neck of the axe is lined up even with the top of the form. Then line up the other half of the mold on your wooden blank to complete the cast. Press firmly and then gently separate the two molds. Carefully remove the wooden blank and secure the two halves of the mold back together. You now have an empty cavity ready to pour liquid copper into that is the exact same size and shape as the original axe blade. The final step is to form a funnel around the opening to our cavity. This will help direct the liquid copper into our mold. To melt the copper you'll need a crucible. Instead of buying a crucible, I carved one out of a fire brick. After several attempts, I found through trial and error it's important to have a well-defined spout carved into your brick to help pour the metal. For this project, I used pieces of scrap copper wire and an oxyacetylene torch to melt it. I tried several attempts of using the primitive method of oxygen and charcoal to melt the copper, but was not able to get it hot enough to reach the melting point. I found oxyacetylene will melt it in a matter of minutes. I also learned that through trial and error, liquid copper cools very quickly and had several failed attempts at casting an axe because the copper hardened before it could completely fill the mold. After learning to keep the flame on the copper as long as possible, I was able to successfully fill the cavity with liquid copper, forming my desired axe. Once the copper cooled, I removed the braces and pulled apart the two halves of my mold. This resulted in a really nice casted blade with extra copper on the neck, sides, and cutting edge of the axe. Some of the extra copper could easily be snapped off with my fingers, and the thick mass at the top of the blade was easily removed using a hacksaw. I removed the final rough spots on the side and tip of the blade using my homemade foot-powered grinder. I worked the edges and sides down to a smooth surface, and then cleaned up the final axe blade using fine grit sandpaper. This resulted in a shiny copper blade that is the same size and shape as the one Utsi the Iceman used more than 5,000 years ago. One thing to note is that shiny copper oxidizes very quickly and develops a dull brown patina within weeks. This patina can be removed easily using sandpaper. The Iceman's copper blade was secured to a U-wood handled axe using birch tar and a leather strap. I'll show you how to make this complete axe in another video. I really enjoy learning about history by making tools that were used by ancient man. 
If you want to learn more about O.C. the Iceman, check out my other YouTube videos. There, I'll show you how to make his arrows, quiver, backpack, bow, and even show you what he ate for his last meal more than 5,000 years ago.